everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Brittany Giroudi of the Giroudi family, a wonderful YouTube channel. She has a wonderful membership group as well that we're going to tell you about, and today she's going to be making tortilla soup. This is perfect. It's soup weather, at least where I am. Please welcome Brittany to the show. Hi there. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Yes, thanks for having me. Well, I am pleased to have you back. And can we share the exciting news? Well, I mean, your community knows, but maybe mine doesn't, that you have that you have a gluten-free bun in the oven. <laughs> yeah, a whole food, whole food plant-based little bun. Um, so yeah, we're we're pregnant right now and expecting um in spring of this year. So very exciting. Well, that is very, very exciting. Congratulations. Well, you look great. So, um, boy, your life is going to change, isn't it? It is. Yes. <laughs> but we're ready. <laughs> okay. Well, good. And and you, you have you have dogs, don't you? We have two dogs. Yeah. Two little dogs. Do they know what's going on and are they excited? Um, the girl dog has been attached to my hip at all times since we found out pretty much. So I feel like she has no idea of what's going on. The boy dog doesn't know what's coming yet, but yeah, typical, typical, right? No, just <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're going to be great. So we're excited that um, they're very tame and lovely animals. So we're really excited for them to be big brother and big sister. <laughs> That, that is fantastic. So, you know, you're already a really healthy eater. Your recipes are delicious, healthy, whole food, plant exclusive without sugar, oil, or salt. Did you change anything in your pregnancy? Um, I haven't. The only thing has been, you know, the first trimester was kind of hard. I had kind of an aversion to greens, which was really wild for me. Um, so as soon as that led up, I back to the big salads and eating a ton of greens. So that was the only thing that was a little challenging for that first 12 weeks, um, that surprised me. But other than that, you know, just enjoying a variety of whole food plant-based items and um, been really lucky that I've been feeling so great this entire time so far. So I really credit that to this lifestyle. Nice. Is your pediatrician on board? Or I mean, not pediatrician. I mean, well, maybe you have one already. Obstetrician, I guess would be the word. Yeah. So with our practice, we have, I'm kind of going... A little bit more of the traditional route that you see like lots of doctors in your practice every time you get a new one and uh, my blood work has been really good so no one has even broached the topic of diet and lifestyle um however you know it, it's funny it's actually came up on my when they're reviewing all of your your medical history you know back before i was whole food plant-based about nine to ten years ago when i had issues with high blood pressure um it's really funny because they are looking at that stuff and you know they're very conscious of my blood pressure now which has been beautiful um so you know i've had the question of you know has anything changed since then and they've obviously seen the weight from 10 years ago to when i started before i got pregnant um, so we got to talk a little bit about lifestyle that way, but other than that, since my blood work, you know, nothing has come up with any issues and, you know, I, I haven't, um, I've gently mentioned a couple of times when they've said stuff at the beginning about like avoiding deli meat. And I'm like, well, that's not a problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious that, Hey, you know, I, this is just a coincidence uh, that you're on the same day. We already had a show earlier with Dr. Lori Marvis, who you work with, and you're welcome to talk about how you work together, but she said you guys are writing a book together. Yeah. Very exciting. So we've been doing, um, this great partnership where we do weekly classes for the healing kitchen. And, um, she does a medical Q and a where people can ask any questions that they have. And I do two recipes every week. We actually have our class tonight. Um, so after this, I'll, get set up for the next thing. But um, yeah, I love working with her. She's just an amazing human being that's so kind. And so I was really excited when she asked me to do the recipes for her book or for that's, our book. <laughs> oh, I like, great. Well, you can promote it here first, if you like, because your recipes are terrific. And, you know, you have a membership group where you give not just recipes, but it's it's so cool. Like you have art classes and music playlists. Do you want to talk about it? And I, I can go grab a link and I'll put it in the chat in the show notes in case people are interested. Yeah, I've been doing this since um, I started the membership back in 2021. And really, people were trying to help, like asking me if they could just give a donation to me. And I and I really wanted to be able to give back to people that wanted to help support 
what we do making recipes, as you know, recipe creating can be very expensive with grocery shopping and testing and having a website. There's lots of things that cost lots of money that people don't even realize. Um, when you're out promoting this lifestyle and spending a lot of time obviously doing it. And so I started the membership and it's just, I try to make it affordable so everyone can afford it. Um, it's just $10 to be a member a month. And we come out with 10 new whole food plant-based SOS free recipes also that are gluten-free friendly. And then on top of that, I also include a monthly cooking class. So we get together for around two to three hours every month. It's recorded. We cook the recipes from that month. And we also do um, an art class. So last night we have like a relaxing art class. So I also talk about like stress management being a pillar of lifestyle and we get together in Zoom. So we've done blanket making. We did um, we did a virtual uh, vision board. We've done uh, scanning old family negatives. If you have like, like, so there's lots of things, all different skill levels can come and attend, you know, the art sessions too. And uh, it's really, really been a fun community to build. So I really, it's very passionate of mine to kind of cultivate great tasting recipes. And the recipe that we're going to do today actually came out last year in January. Um, we did a whole month of soups. Nice. Terrific. And do you like do how do you do it? Like is, is everybody on Zoom when you do your your meetings? And it, it... yeah, so all the live classes are on Zoom um, and you try to do it on a Saturday. So a lot of people can attend. Uh, we record it as always and post the link after. And same with the art classes. It's through Zoom um, so people can watch. So right now, if you signed up for the membership, I also leave up four months at a time. So it gives lots of people lots of time to download everything and to view it all um, or save the links if they want. So you could actually view like eight hours of cooking videos I've done, art videos, um, as well as 40 plus recipes that are inside. Nice. Do, um, do you still teach art? No. So I left teaching at the end of the school year last year to do this full time. So I've um, hung up the one uh, hat, but followed my my passion, which is sharing recipes and making a community of plant based eaters. So feeling very lucky to be able to do that, um, especially now with a little one on the way too. Nice. That's fantastic. So are you going to cook your soup just the regular way in a pot or do you do instant pot for a lot of your recipes? Um, we do instant pot for some things. So one one month we had kind of an instant pot crock pot kind of situation where um, sometimes I pick a different theme every month. Um, this soup is so easy and takes, you know, you could do it in an instant pot if you wanted to. But uh, just in case some people don't have a pressure cooker, I always like to give like the option. So I always try to be and you'll see as I talk about this recipe, really inclusive to what everyone everyone has. There's not necessarily a gadget you need. I do have an instant pot and love it like you do. Um, so there's there's always something for everyone. Yeah, I never understand people's resistance to an instant pot because I feel it, it, you can get them very affordably now. I was just at Walmart yesterday, fifty nine dollars, and they I think they make your life so much easier. I think people are generally just intimidated by pressure cookers. And it's just, if you just like read the manual and, you know, I think that was my, my hang up before I had one, but they're so easy. And even some of the newer models, like the seal and vent, they make it, you know, where it's, it's an actually a button. Now it's not necessarily just toggled one way. So, I mean, I have never had an issue or any safety concerns using it, but I usually feel like that's the big hold up. On. That's on. funny. Read the manual. I have never run a manual in my life and I can do it. You just push <laughs> the button. I've never used any of the buttons other than, you know, pressure cook and just, I don't know. But I think, I think when people get one, I, I haven't met the person yet that was unhappy with that purchase. That's true. We actually, I have them in variety of sizes for variety of reasons. So they're great. Like, especially if you do potlucks or big family get togethers, we have like an eight quart that we pull out for that. We have a three quart for just me, different sizes for different things. It's so funny. We just had our monthly meetup and we had over a hundred people and there weren't enough plugs for all the instant pots. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. So tortilla yeah. soup, yum. I love it. So I love this recipe because it's easy and it's cold here in Pittsburgh where I live. Um, we're just kind of getting out of all the snow that just melted from us, but 
you know, January, is, January, February in my area is always really cold. So it's definitely soup weather. Um, I love this. So there's an optional for the recipe to make kind of chips or tortilla strips. And it's so easy to make. I get questions on this all the time. We just either get a whole wheat tortilla wrap, um, like Ezekiel cells, or most times I just get corn tortillas and you can actually cut them into triangles if you want to do a chip or even long lengthwise um, little strips. And you just bake them in the oven on parchment paper or a silicone baking sheet and they crisp up. And then it's such a beautiful topper for the recipe. So I'm going to do this first just so we can get them in the oven while the soup cooks. But again, it's like so easy. I'm just literally making strips of the corn tortilla. And then I just take them onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet that you can have. And you know, I just, how, you know yeah. how I do mine, Brittany? I do them in the air fryer for five minutes. Yeah, when we when we moved to this house, we um, I used to have the Breville Smart Oven Air, and then we gave it to my one of my family members um, for counter space. I was trying to not trying to limit how much stuff. So we have two ovens though that I just use in place, but an air fryer would work great too. Oh my God! How does anyone get rid of a Breville? <laughs> We have we have a ninja grill that we it's an electric grill that we have outside and it has a air fryer. So in the summertime I air fry more, but yeah. I, but we just use the just use the oven. So you can just do little strips and then we're gonna put these in the oven. I like to do this at 350 for around five minutes and then flip them for another five, but you kind of want to keep an eye. They can burn a little easy. So I'm going to pop these in the oven now. We'll keep an eye on those once we get started. And then I just like to dump everything into a pot. So this recipe, if you're not a cook, this recipe is for you. All of our recipes on our membership and on my channel, I try to make very easy. Everyone can do them any skill level. For this one, we're going to use soy curls, which is great if you're trying to get your family maybe, you know, to be more whole food plant based and they still want that texture of chicken per se. Um, I love using shredded soy curls and it's so easy. We just took the dried soy curls. I get them from Butler Soy. Soak them in water. I did that while I was setting up for today. Drain the water after like 10 minutes or so. And then I just do them in small batches in the blender and it shreds them on the lowest setting. And then that really works as your chicken replacement for anything you need shredded chicken. So this is optional. You don't have to do soy curls, especially if you're like in the UK and can't find it or other parts of the world. Um, we just like sometimes when we have it for family or, or if, you know, we're trying to get in a little bit of extra soy. Uh, we love using this. So I just do this on the lowest setting and it shreds so easy. In like seconds, it's done. And then we're gonna add that in. So that's really the only two things we had to really prep, um, which took seconds. And then in our pot, I'm gonna do four cups of a no oil, no salt vegetable broth. And do you buy it or make it? I do both. So sometimes I like to have the convenience and I also like to support some of the people, you know, the people that are making oil-free, salt-free items. So Bonify is a brand that we found in our grocery store recently that started to carry it. Um, that's has nothing but just vegetables in it. Uh, and then, you know, when I'm getting, when I'm making a lot of soups, especially this time of year, I like to usually make it myself with all the scraps. So it kind of varies. I kind of go in and out of having it on hand and then also just, you know, being able to make our own super easy. I'm gonna turn this guy on. So I have it on my induction top here so you guys can see. We're gonna put a 15 ounce can of salt-free beans. I like to use black beans for this. Now, if you don't wanna use soy curls, you could also double up and use a different bean. Like a kidney bean would be great in this as well. And then I have the rest of the items so we're gonna flavor it. But after, before we do that, we're gonna add all the veggies. So I have two bell peppers that I've chopped. 
so easy to throw in. One cup of frozen or fresh corn, depending on the time of year I make this, you know, fresh corn isn't available right now in Pittsburgh. So frozen corn is great that I just add in. I love our freezer is packed, probably too much packed with frozen vegetables and fruit. So we always have it on hand uh, whenever we want to do this. Half of a small onion. I picked a red onion. It's all going to cook together beautifully. All right. And then we're going to add in our soy curls that we shredded. And then we're going to flavor this guy. And this recipe is almost done. As soon as everything cooks together, it's finished. So if you need something on a weekend night that's quick, this is the recipe to make. And I probably would be doing this a ton and freezing it and having it ready to go once we have our, our little guy here. All right. Any, so now any, any substitutes for the soy curls? I'm allergic to soy and I'm so jealous of the people that get to eat it because I hear they're excellent. Well, if and you also can't do beans, right? Yeah, so I can't do the whole soup. But the thing so, is, I, I do have a tortilla soup recipe without either, but I'm just curious for the soy component. Yeah. Yeah, I would double up on the beans or use a different bean like kidney beans, or you could leave out the beans and the soy curls. And you can always add, you know, like a starch, like a sweet potato would be great. Um, you could leave it out and double up on the vegetables and serve it even over a whole grain or starch. I really like. So it doesn't necessarily, you can always switch things out. Really the main part of it is gonna be the flavor profile we're giving it. So to this, I like to add half a cup of homemade salsa and that's gonna bring out a lot of flavors. So I just add that in, super easy to make too. I'm also gonna add in some chili powder, cumin and garlic powder as our seasoning. How so do you make are... salsa? Cause I'm looking for a good salt-free salsa. I love to do um, tomatoes that I finally chop in a food processor and we put in some red onions. Um, I do like a little bit of jalapenos in it for some heat, but you can always leave that out. And then we add a bunch of spices to it and really, or you can do it in a blender too. Uh, and some white wine or white vinegar. Uh, sometimes I've used rice vinegar too for it and I blitz it really, really well. And that's perfect. I mean, you can make it chunky or smooth, but we always have like a, container either in the freezer or in the fridge ready to go. I didn't realize you could freeze salsa and because I do still buy salsa with salt because I, I eat I I just worry that if I make it fresh it's not going to last very long. Yeah I freeze it and I haven't had any issues. So and I we cool. love to freeze things even in like little um silicone uh ice cube trays and then that's nice for individual servings because sometimes like I want it on something and I use salsa all the time as even a dressing and salads or different things like that so I'm a big salsa fan I love salsa have you ever made it from a can of either salt-free fire roasted tomatoes or salt-free rotel fire roast uh, regular tomatoes with chilies in it I haven't been able to find the Rotel salt-free one here. I've heard of other people speaking of it. I never can find it in the grocery store where I live, but I've done the salt-free um, diced tomatoes and that's worked great too. Cause not always, I love the summer for tomato season, but you know, right now is not the best time usually to buy it. So it depends on how good tomatoes look in our grocery store. Well, have I, you checked Walmart? Cause that's where I find the Rotel salt-free with chips. I haven't been able to find it there either. So maybe if I order it online, I mean, I'm sure nowadays you can find everything online, but our, I've checked Walmart too. I've been deeply disappointed in my area. Um, so three tablespoons of tomato paste goes into. And that's really the bulk of the recipe. I do have an optional miso paste that you can always add at the end if you want, um, depending on, you know, if you're avoiding miso or using it. And it's gonna flavor it. And then you can top it with the tortilla chips that we kind of made, the little strips. I cook everything until everything's nice and tender. The onions are translucent, the peppers are soft, and it's pretty much done. It's so easy. And then another flavor bomb I sometimes like to do is do a homemade um, plant-based yogurt. So we have one that's just soy milk and uh, probiotic that we make in the Instant Pot actually. And so I love to keep this on top just as a little like dollop when we serve it 
Or sometimes when we have guests over, if I have an avocado, you could always put avocado on it. But this is kind of traditionally what I always do. That's All right, let's check on the uh, chips real quick. I'm sure they are pretty much done. I flip those guys real quick, and we're going to give them just a couple more minutes just to brown a little bit more. But, I mean, we have dinner. We did this in, like, less than 10 minutes. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be complicated. Super full of flavor. The whole family can enjoy it. This is a great, especially with the shredded soy crawls, one for one for chicken tortilla soup that a lot of people have been used to before being plant-based. So that's my goal as I try to get the whole family kind of on board. So we make recipes that are very comforting for what you remember before being plant-based because most of us are not born into this lifestyle. I'm very lucky that our, our little guy will be whole food plant-based since birth. I feel extremely lucky to have been doing this for so long before getting pregnant because um, other than Mark Huberman, I don't know if I know of anyone else that's been um, from the get-go, I know a couple people on the NHA board that have been, but it's a small, small pool of numbers. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. I, I did, well, congratulations. Oh, here's an interesting question from Cindy. Do you think you could use jackfruit as a substitute for soy curls? I think that might be a similar texture. Totally. I would just rinse it really well. The only thing with jackfruit, especially if you get, you know, if you're using canned, is just really to rinse, 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 and rinse. So it gets all the flavor off of it. But yeah, jackfruit would be great as a replacement too. Yeah. Well, so what do you eat in a day in general? Because I know you had trouble with the greens during the early pregnancy. I can imagine because if you're nauseous, that that would be the one time greens with vegetables in general don't appeal to me. Is uh, It was so hard. It was so such a bizarre thing that I couldn't even look in that direction. Um, but now that everything's feeling better, generally I eat, um, I love oatmeal in the morning. So I always eat some kind of oatmeal. Um, and this is before being pregnant or not, but uh, I do, I love overnight oats in the summertime. We do steel cut oats or oak oats cooked in the winter that are warm. Sometimes I even do like rolled oats and kind of a breakfast cookie. Um, so it's always some kind of oats with flax and sometimes I do like chia seeds. Um, you know, I've been, I guess, a little bit more focused on omega-3s since being pregnant, but, um, you know, generally I was trying to get that in anyway, but, you know, a little bit more making sure that's always checked off. Uh, and then lunch, generally I like to do a big chop salad. So, and when I mean a chop salad, I mean, they're pretty, pretty massive, but I also love to add um, a grain to the salad. So we have a lot of greens. That's how I batch cook is I just cook up greens to pull from the refrigerator. So I change that up. We add in beans to it. Um, I love the seven, the seven herb Italian from the California balsamic has like been my go-to salad dressing forever. Uh, so generally most days I have that. Uh, lots of vegetables mixed in there. And then for dinner, I kind of split it up. I like something like a soup like this. Um, I'll pair it with another starch generally, but yeah, that's kind of, and then there's like fruit in between, you know, usually I snack on fruit or vegetables, but I'm never, I'm always, um, satisfied, you know, never hungry. It's been great. I love food. So yeah, I know that's the best thing about this. Hey, just, just for kicks and giggles, I Googled the Rotel salt-free canned tomatoes with the green chilies and they are on amazon for a dollar a can i paid a dollar 50 a can at walmart that's pretty reasonable i mean i think after this i'm gonna have to go try them i've i've done a couple times grocery shopping hunting for them and just haven't had any luck so i think amazon thankfully has everything nowadays pretty much i know a lot of people don't like it but it really is your one-stop shop and i do a lot of cooking classes for doctors on zoom and man and if i'm on an ingredient it comes like in two hours how is that even possible yeah, I live a little bit out now, more in the country, so I don't, it takes a little bit longer, I have to plan, but thankfully, like, getting soy curls and different things, you know, all of that is possible through. Yeah. Are you able to exercise during your pregnancy? Yes. So after, after the nausea in the first trimester subsided, like, I walk all the time, 
um, feel really good. I try to do a lot of things that are going to help me prepare for birth. So a lot of like squats, <laughs> more squats than before. Um, I've done some like Pilates things that are set up for pregnancy, but yeah, yeah. Thankfully I've been feeling really great and, you know, I feel so lucky because when I go to the doctor, they ask me like, you know, have you had acid reflux? And it's like, no, thankfully that I haven't had any of that. You know, how, how's going to the restroom? Totally fine. Everything's still working. Thanks to all the fiber. I'm kidding. Uh, you know, um, are you sleeping okay? And like that as well, hasn't really been an issue yet. So I really think movement and eating really well has helped me so far have a really healthy pregnancy. Thanks. A question from a live viewer. Sterling says, miso paste, what brand am I looking for? I've found a rest, lot of recipes that require it, but I can't find in any of my stores. So I like to get ours either at, now I have to travel into the city. We live outside of Pittsburgh, um, but I go to Whole Foods to generally get ours or even like a co-op usually has it or an Asian market. Um, if you can find a store near you. But I like to get just as long as it's a soy miso, because that's, for me, I follow what Dr. Greger's research um, has shown, and the soy is protective against the sodium. So I've used to have issues with blood pressure before being whole food plant-based, um, to the point where I was on two different blood pressure medicines, you know, back when I was 23. And uh, thankfully, like, haven't had any issues being whole food plant-based, have beautiful blood pressure now. But I do use a little bit of white miso paste and I also regularly check my blood pressure and it hasn't affected it. So um, I would just recommend getting the soy based because that's what the research has shown versus like a chickpea or a different kind because we don't know until they test it. And I always like to get white just because it's a milder, doesn't have that like very um, strong taste compared to the red and some of the deeper ones. And I also recommend using it, it's usually like a small amount for a lot. So we're not necessarily, you're not trying to make like miso soup out of it. So you don't need a lot, you know, anytime you use it. So one tub lasts us long, long time, long time, even with recipe creating. Nice. So uh, there's a question from Justine and she asks, do the soy curls get soggy after a while, especially if there are leftovers? I have experienced this before. Do you have any suggestions to avoid that? Um, definitely if they sit and you're not like baking them, then they would get soft. They're naturally soft after you rehydrate them. Uh, what I recommend is trying the shredded version. It just breaks them up a little bit more. And then they're soft, you know, similar to like what chicken would be. Uh, but you can always bake them. So, you know, if we want soy curls in something that we bake, I generally follow that philosophy of cooking things at 250 to avoid glycotoxins or AGEs to be more. Um, so we can, you can coat them, but you know, I think, I personally think that they are a little bit soft, but I enjoy them that way. So I wouldn't say soggy, but, but try shredding them. Nice. Do you, do you do any kind of batch cooking in general? Do you have like a routine you could share for? So not really batch cooking, um, per se, because, you know, always recipe testing. So there's always something new that I'm working on every day, pretty much. But I batch cook grains and even beans. Um, so that way that those things that take a longer time are easily available. So, you know, I'll cook up some oat groats and keep those in the fridge and then pull them out for actually making like oatmeal that's hot or adding them to a salad. And I have that variety. And same thing, like just throughout the week, I try to switch up varieties. So like cooking up some potatoes and having them in the fridge or sweet potatoes. Generally, I always have on hand. That, that kind of batch cooking. And I think that makes it, for me, it makes it easy for when I want something quick, but also whenever I'm creating something or want to try something new. Nice. Thanks. Gina, who's watching live, would like to know if she joins your membership today, is the scanning negatives class still available? Yes. So I, we did that back when I started it, but I wanted people to be able to use it anytime. So I kind of grandfathered that video in. So that one is a permanent fixture just in case, you know, you want to watch it as many times as you want. And I show my exact scanner that we have. And um, we have scanned negatives, slide film, photographs. I kind of archived my whole family crazy albums that they had full of things. So yeah, it's, it's definitely still available. 
That's funny. When I heard that, I thought like scanning negatives, like negatives in your life. You know what I mean? I didn't realize it was photo negatives. Well, most people, when you're going through things, you find like old boxes of things you've either never had printed. We had, um, when my mom was sick too, while we were going through her things and we found so many childhood things that no one had ever seen. Cause that's how they, I mean, that even when I was younger, we didn't have digital cameras, they had film. And so it's been really fun to kind of find, you know, all those treasures that you probably have in your house, in your basement somewhere that need to be saved. So they don't, you know, they get seen. Right. Brass neck says, Brittany, you look amazing. Thank you. Do you still do that thing? You used to take people like uh, camping? Yeah. Yeah. So we, so this year will be a little bit different, but we've done it the last couple of years um, where we get together a weekend last weekend in July and we all go camping together. We've had about 60 to 70 people each time and we do a big potluck. Uh, we love it. We did it in Maryland and this year it's still going to go on. It'll be in July, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be attending since we'll have a newborn then. Um, but some of the people that helped me run the group are going to host it. So it's still like people come back each year. So much fun. There's new people. There's all these activities. We did um, paddle boarding and kayaking last year. We made date s'mores. Um, really just a lot of fun. And I've become such great friends with so many people that have come and now they're like family to me. Uh, so it's been really great. So we are doing it next year. Once our baby is one, um, we're going to bring him with us. So it'll be a whole family affair. That sounds like fun. Uh, Peaceful says, love your style and approach to cooking, Brittany. Thank you from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Oh, thank you. Nice. If you guys have any questions, drop it in the chat. Are you more of a savory person or a sweet person when it comes to food? Um, I go back and forth. I love both. I feel like you just have such an appreciation, especially when you're making recipes for both. Um, I know that I, it's funny. It's like, I feel like the dessert recipes that I do get more, more views. People really like desserts, um, which is so funny because then some people get upset. That's, you know, if I don't do something savory, you know, right then. So I, I love both. I think they're, it's so fun to play in the kitchen. So it's hard to pick her to pick which one. Nice. And crazy farm girl asks, are you going to find out the sex of the baby? How many children do you guys think you want? So we already found out and I announced it in our last video, but we're having a boy. Um, so a little boy will be joining us in May and I, we're going to start with one, I would say, and see how it goes, but I can't see more than two. Um, my husband is one of seven. <laughs> So definitely not seven, uh, but you know, we're going to see how the first one goes. Okay. I'm going to grab the chips out of the oven real quick. Baked Cookie Shop says, what brand of soy curls? I've never made them. I recently started experimenting with Satan. Well, I think there's only one brand out there that you can buy. So it's Butler Soy Curls and it's just dehydrated soy. Pretty sure no one's like else has claimed the market in soy curls. Um, so we buy from them and I love it. It's just the soy bean that we use. And it's a family company uh, that we, we usually buy it in bulk. And I always have a couple packets in the pantry ready to go. Great. And there's uh, this question that one of the viewers posted, I was going to actually ask myself, great minds think alike. What's been your biggest craving during pregnancy? You know, it's so funny because I literally had no cravings, which I kind of think was kind of uh, unexpected for me. But also I've done some research and they talk about if you're craving something, usually you're deficient in something. So I don't know if that's like a testament to that. I have been doing really great with my nutrition and hopefully and thankfully to my blood test, like nothing per se has been missing. Um, but yeah, there hasn't been like anything that I've like desperately needed. Um, so it's been kind of twofold. I get asked that a lot. So, but unfortunately there hasn't really been like a set thing. Nice. Uh, Nancy says, do soy curls have a chef a shelf life? Um, they are, they're dehydrated. So usually they do have a date 
that all the packages come on to use them by. Um, I have not found that they go bad really quickly, but I know lots of people keep them in their freezer um, to extend that. So, but they usually have a pretty long, this guy is, is up in the end of May, but I've had this for a package for a long time. I didn't just buy it recently. So yeah, I just, you know, if I'm buying like a huge amount that I know I'm not going to get to for a while, the freezer is a great place to store them. If it's smaller amounts that we're going to use up in the next month or two, they just stick in our pantry until we open them. Thanks. Uh, Clark would like to know, would you use potassium chloride instead of miso for a salty flavor? Yeah, you, you definitely can. It's, it's, I always tell people it's personal preference for how you want to serve your guests and yourself. Um, you know, you can add, there's lots of different items out there like green salt and table tasty. We, I love table tasty as well as a seasoning. There's lots of SOS free blends that you could add on top as a topper. So it's personal preference. Um, you know, if you want to use something else. Great. Uh, Carrie says, I went to the camp last summer. It was a blast, fun and informative. And yeah. then I, so a question and let's see. Kim says, did being whole food plant-based keep you from getting morning sickness? No, <laughs> no, it's definitely, I, and I joke about morning sickness. It really was like all day sickness. Um, so for the first 12 weeks, that's what I experienced um, pretty much right after finding out. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a whole food plant-based or maybe nutritional item that you get to avoid that. But I do know that the, when I ate small meals, it helped a little bit, but thankfully that has passed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the worst nausea. And uh, one of the viewers named Anna says that soy curls contain fat. So best to store in the freezer so they don't go rancid. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Have you tried sumac? One of the viewers is mentioning that I love sumac. It's not exactly a salt substitute, but it's, it's very good. Yeah, I love, like, we love Nick from Local Spicery and all of his, like, blends and his one that he has, sumac in. So I'm a big fan of theirs and have really loved, like, playing around. So that's been great. If you looked at all my spices, it's, like, an abundance of, you know, what do I want to top it with? Which is the my kind of philosophy for being whole food plant-based is there's so much variety of things, spices, food, to make it really fun. So we always kind of change it up so it doesn't get boring. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm, I, well, your life's going to change, isn't it? <laughs> going to get up. There's going to be, I'm excited that there's going to be another Drudy family member because when I started my channel, I wanted it to be my family to get your family healthy, but my husband is not interested in, he comes to all the events with me. Like if you ever see us at a conference, if you come to the NHA conference, or um, if I ever do a speaking event, he's always there helping me. Uh, and he comes to the camp Drudy, but he is, does not like to be on camera. So, and I don't push that, you know, um, but it will be exciting to have another member to like, it's not, it's not just me. I promise doing this lifestyle. My husband's the same way. People are like, he's only done the show once. And it was because we were trying to raise money for our friend who's uh, quadriplegic to get him a van. And other than that, he just does not want anything to do with the camera. Yeah, behind the scenes, because like right right now he's working, but keeping our dogs quiet downstairs, you know, so he helps me in all these different ways that people don't see. But if you ever do come to an event, um, just like Charles, you know, like he'd love to talk to you and, and loves this lifestyle, which I'm really lucky that we're doing it together with the little yeah. strips came out and they're nice and crunchy now. And you can add these as a topping. They crisp up really nicely. And no oil you know, a nice little crunch to add to the top of your soup. Yeah, we used to be able to find them here without oil and then they, they stopped carrying them. So now we have to make them ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I also have been not very lucky in a lot of things that other people can find. So a lot of it's homemade too. Yep. Sharon says, I highly recommend Brittany's membership recipes and classes are awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, have you ever heard of the Mi Rancho tortillas? I have heard of them. I haven't tried them. You can get them online. I love them because they're called Thin Credibles. And because they're so thin, they just crisp. They're just, I, in my opinion, make the best strips and chips. I just love them. And they're organic, which is nice. Yeah. The only one that we really can find that's 
the salt-free, oil-free is the ones from Trader Joe's, which are, are, they're okay. They do the job, but you know, every once in a while, I'm sure those are probably superior. <laughs> Drake says, once your boy is eating solid food, are you going to share uh, how about raising a whole food plant-based newborn with other like-minded mothers? Definitely. So I definitely have plans now that I'm, you know, way into my second trimester and feeling better. It was hard to film a little bit of what was going on the first weeks. Um, but now that I'm feeling much better now, I have lots of plans for lots of videos because, um, you know, I do believe like, for example, like we got pregnant pretty easily, um, you know, how good I've been feeling this pregnancy. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, after everything goes good, um, raising him this way, uh, definitely have want to share and make it more available. We, I love all the resources that are out there, but it still feels a little bit like there isn't a bunch. So I'm excited to, to share and help others that are want to do it this way too. Do you have any idea when your book will be out? What's it called? What kind of recipes you'll have? Yeah. So we're, we're just starting to think about a couple different ideas. We have a bunch of various projects that we're kind of combining. So, um, you know, different ones, uh, topics that I know Dr. Marvis has had planned. So we're still hashing out some of those like last details, but hopefully in the next month or two, um, we'll have something to, to prepare for you guys. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. This was such an easy recipe. Do you think if somebody wanted to do it in the instant pot, they could just throw everything in? Yeah, especially like if you're using canned beans that are already cooked, you know, not dry beans, that makes it really easy. I mean, this would definitely not take long at all because it comes together so quick. So I would maybe do this like for five minutes and maybe quick release even, um, but it could turn out great. So if you have an instant pot, you definitely can do this one with it. No problems. That's great. Well, so good seeing you again. Me too. Thank you guys for having me. My pleasure. And check out Brittany's membership. The link has been posted in the chat in the show note. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow a little later at noon for Dr. Judd Brewer. Dr. Marvis talked about his new book, The Hunger Habit, Why We Eat When We're Not Hungry. And I have another show tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time, none other than Dr. Michael Greger. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And